Velociraptor. Design. This is easily and obviously the most accurate Velociraptor ever put to screen. There is a strong possibility that the dromaeosaur designs in prehistoric planets are extremely close to how the real animal actually looked, barring fat distribution and colors and patterns. The velociraptors are well endowed with lots of fat and muscles as well as the connective tissues around the arms and legs, like the propatagium. These velociraptors are clad in a coat of simple filamentous feathers and complete veined feathers. This is both an inference from its closest relatives that have been preserved with feather impressions in their skeletons as well as direct evidence of feathers in a specimen of Velociraptor itself. A forelimb bone of Velociraptor has been described with a series of little knobs sticking out the back. These knobs correspond to the exact size and placement of what are called quill knobs in living dinosaurs. Plenty of birds do not have quill knobs, but if those knobs are present, they mean that there definitely were feathers there. If velociraptors had these quill knobs, they would have had large complex feathers on their arms. And if they had these kinds of wings, it is also quite likely that they had feathers covering the rest of their bodies from head to toe. This is backed up by the organization of feathers in other dromaeosaur fossils that have them preserved. Each of them was covered from head to toe in feathers, just like birds. If we take a look at the faces of these velociraptors, we will see something quite unique. The prehistoric planet team gave the velociraptors leathery skin around the jaw edges with some keratinization here and there. They look quite keratinized to me, or at least keratinized skin, but Dr. Nash states they are meant to be leathery skin, so I will go with that. As per the most recent work on theropod lips and considering the presence of foramina and surface textures of Velociraptor, it should have lips just as any other non-avian theropod. Some researchers and artists have hypothesized that dromaeosaurs have had keratinized skin or pure keratin sheaths over their face almost like bird beaks, but not much evidence exists for this hardened skin that became like keratin or straight up keratinized over time may be possible, what with the presence of formina and the rough or etched textures of the lip edge in Velociraptor. But I think more might need to be done before something as clear as keratin sheaths can be quantified for these dinosaurs. Another interesting thing to note about the anatomy of these raptors is their sickle claws. They are absurdly long and curly, and this is exactly what they would have looked like. This assertion is based on how much the keratin sheath over the claw bone extends the length of the claw in modern birds, but also other reptiles. This is also backed up by dromaeosaur specimens that directly preserve some chemical components or imprints of the keratin sheaths showing that the condition of the keratin sheath in dromaeosaurs closely mirrored that seen in modern birds of prey. Now, there is another odd bit about the velociraptors in this episode. Technically, the genus Velociraptor did not live with Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus fossils come from the Nemect formation, approximately 70 million years ago. Velociraptor comes from the Dejokta Formation and Bayan Mandahu Formation, both being about 75 to 71 million years ago. The thing is, though, that fossils of Velociraptorine dromaeosaurs have been found in the rock layers that also preserved Tarbosaurus fossils. They are just too fragmentary to name. The traits that are preserved in these specimens are so close to Velociraptor proper that further studies may even find them to be additional species of Velociraptor itself. So, for the sake of simplicity and popularity, the people behind Prehistoric Planet decided to use the name Velociraptor within the episode proper. Behavior the Velociraptors are shown individually hunting down lizards in the shadows of the snoozing Tarbosaurs. They are not portrayed as pack hunters, but as more opportunistic, perhaps partially social animals. They are seen moving in twos or threes on occasion. Support for this inclusion, as Dr. Nash has noted, comes from dromaeosaur trackways and the behavior of modern predatory birds. The only cooperative modern bird of prey is the Harris's hawk. They are known to hunt in groups of two to six. 
This makes pack hunting quite rare among birds, and perhaps it was rare in theropod dinosaurs as well. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.